So this triangle uh, represents, uh, well, all the people working in a big company, uh, let's say in the early 80s. And what happened then, that was with the Washington Consensus, that was an agreement that was made between World Bank and uh, International Monetary Fund, and uh, so the US financial authorities, um, they wanted to just uh, to allow money to be spread worldwide, which means that shareholders could put their money anywhere in the world. And this has considerably uh, changed the world of work, uh, because from that moment on, um, the most important thing was to just increase profit from shares. And uh, then in Japan, they were already busy with outsourcing uh, to a large extent. And so that's how outsourcing penetrated very quickly in an exponential way into the whole world. And so ever since, it's a bit uh, simplified the whole story, but uh, let's do it like that. So the big companies, they kept their core business. Um, and then, uh, of course, they, they did join with other, other business. They absorbed each other, and so they became bigger. Uh, and then you had some, um, under there, had some production activities uh, linked to the core business that did stay very close to the mother company. And then at the bottom, uh, you have the the maintenance and the kitchen and, uh, and guards and everything. So, and these things at the bottom, these are the things that were outsourced quite quickly. And sometimes you have the very specialized enterprises, uh, and this is a big advantage of this outsourcing. You can have all competence in each industry all the time, so that makes it cheaper, but that makes it often also more competent. But very often also there are maintenance jobs which are very risky for health and safety, and which are also outsourced. Now, what is the problem with that? That before that, when all the people were in the same big company, in, the, in our big triangle, you had very good, in these big companies, very good occupational health and occupational safety and industrial hygiene professionals and so on. While now, you have the best competence in top of our triangle, while the risks are at the bottom of our triangle. But those people are out of the original companies. And this is a major challenge for, for, for health and safety in the modern world of work. So depending upon the, the type of uh, sector, so the, the, the surface of the different uh, uh, boxes in there are different. Eh? It can be very small at the bottom and very big uh, and top and so on and so on. Just a kind of very simplified model to, to, to understand what is uh, happening and what uh, has happened ever since 1989 when the Washington deal, that's the deal uh, the Washington Consensus, that was the one with the invisible hand, ever since the invisible hand is running the economics in the world, eh? all to uh, now International Monetary Fund and others are just coming step by step back from that uh, big uh, illusion. Some people became very rich, but it, uh, and that was the goal probably, but other people uh, became very poor in that world. So, but ever since, we are more than ever before uh, facing a dualistic world of occupational health and safety, with at the left hand side you see well developed skills and diplomas, stable working conditions, limited exposure to risks, high mental workload very often, very stressful. But with career planning, those people are, have good living conditions and the living environment uh, is well chosen and they are very well represented by trade unions and they have also good health surveillance both inside and outside companies. While on the right hand side, you have the other part of the uh, labor world. It's two extremes, it's modeling, I said, it's not uh, reality sometimes. There are much more gray zones in it, but okay. Poor or no training, eh? unskilled workers, changing working conditions and environment every now and then. They have to seek for a new employer again and again. High exposure to multiple and variable risks high physical workload, no choice in jobs, they have to take whatever they can get, poor living conditions and living environment also. Even when they're working abroad, sometimes they are housed in, uh, in, in, in an incredible way, which is not really human. Often, unfortunately, despite the efforts of many trade unions all over Europe, no trade union representation or they have not been in contact with it and poor health surveillance. Uh, 
so when we spoke this morning about health promotion, health promotion, that's something which is very useful and employers can be convinced of if we are at the left-hand side, but at the right-hand side, it's a, health promotion is a kind of luxury uh, for them, I, I'm afraid. Posted workers, you can have both at the left and at the right-hand side. We must not forget it. Posting is not a bad thing as such. Eh? It depends upon the conditions, but at the left-hand side, posting in general will not be a major problem. These people can speak for themselves. So, but for too many people in the world, not a majority, eh, but too many people in the world that are very powerful, this is what workers is about. It's a kind of tool to make more money. Respect for human beings, none. Now, when we apply that to posted worker fraud, uh, you will see that unbelievable things are possible. This is an example, thanks to Philippe for this uh, image. Eh? So the number one, that's Belgium, that very small country there. So the execution of the contract is in Belgium. Workers were working in Belgium, so-called posted workers. The official contractor is an employer with a fictive uh, posting address in, uh, in, in London. And that company was led by, so it's a letterbox company led by Dutch people. And um, that Dutch company of the Netherlands does, uh, is specialized in recruiting and posting people. It's a kind of go-between, like interim office or whatever you may call it. But in the Netherlands, interim office is very broad. So practices, for instance, which are forbidden in Belgium are systematically allowed in the Netherlands. Eh? of gangmasters, and then, uh, but they have to be registered nowadays. Eh? And then uh, number four is a German sister company of the same Dutch uh, uh, leadership. And uh, they are subcontractor for number two for London, and that's uh, in fact the, effective, uh, the only effective contractor. And the people who are working for that company are uh, Polish workers, in reality working for number four, but uh, with a labor contract with number two. That's what we can see nowadays. Eh? But most of all, those were not posted workers. They were living and working in Belgium since much more than two years, so they cannot be posted workers, because the maximum is one year plus one year extension is two years for posting. Eh? And that's how, how it goes nowadays. So in the newspapers, sometimes we can hear about um, um, such uh, practices. It is called mafia practices in uh, the meat sector in Ghent. Uh, one of our beautiful cities. And um, so this were, uh, uh, well, the origin doesn't matter, but it were people from, Turkish people from Bulgari, Turkish speaking people from Bulgaria, and, um, and their victims were also Turkish, pe Turkish speaking people from Bulgaria. Eh? But there was a kind of mafia that was installed in Ghent, and they were not only in the meat sector, but also in prostitution and in uh, house renting at extremely high prices, uh, also for people illegally coming into the country and profiting of them, human trafficking and so on. So uh, also drug trafficking. So they, had, they have a lot of businesses and they corrupted sometimes some of uh, their victims to say you can double your salary, net salary, because they did not contribute to social security. Eh? Uh, um, double net salary and, uh, and a big uh, German car, and so they were tempted, and that's how you get some complicity uh, from people sometimes that before were your victims, and that's how it's worked. Happily, we can say that uh, thanks to a very good collaboration between labor inspection and uh, the judicial authorities, that uh, almost all of these practices have been eradicated. But of course, it's never completely eradicated Mafia people always start over and over again. So let's not make ourselves illusions. But it has asked, uh, it required enormous efforts uh, to just get it. So also the same was written in the best uh, article I ever read in a newspaper uh, on the same issue. And that was in the newspaper that normally is read only by employers and people and bank people and so on. So, in, but it wasn't. Wonderful uh, explanation. It should be translated in all languages because it gives a very accurate description of what type of practices may happen today and with which consequences for also for health and safety of people, but of course for the social protection as, as well. Now this is, image is coming from uh, a colleague from uh, Portugal uh, during the Belgian uh, presidency of the EU with the Senior Labour Inspectors Committee, that's the director generals of all the labour inspection services dealing with us from uh, European Union member states and the 
EFTA countries, European Free Trade Association countries, so they come together once every six months in the country that is chairing the European Union, and there is also a thematic day linked to that. And so the thematic day in Belgium in those days was on precarious working conditions, and so this was an example given by a Portuguese colleague, you can read it for yourself, I will not read it all, so you see, you see there bogus independent workers, undeclared workers, immigrant workers, temporary workers, some of these people are posted workers as well, but in a mixture, in a mess of, 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 of all type of, of irregularities, you find the posted workers as well, and this is what happened in, uh, in a subcontracting construction uh, site in, uh, in, uh, in, in Portugal. Now, what is the problem regarding us of such constructions? That, of course, it's full of people who are in need of having a job, of gaining money, eh? and who are often in a position of judicial insecurity. And so those people are ready to accept dangerous conditions. And if you accept unacceptable conditions, what can you do? Either you get crazy or you say, oh, this is normal. You interiorize the distorted norms. You don't complain. When people are living in North Korea, of course, most people there will identify themselves with the regime over there, even if some things that are required from the people are really absurd. But otherwise, you get crazy. That's the choice you have. So also, those people, they will interiorize the distorted norms and will say, OK, this is, this is as it should be. And then, of course, you get uh, the unconscious complicity, because they play the game as well. Eh? They are victims and are players at the same time in that game. And that's really dramatic. Where does it lead us to? To unfair competition. And if there is unfair competition, so, and they make profit, not the people who work there make profit, but some people behind the screens make profit. So you will have more enterprises that are non osh friendly And then, of course, as a consequence, you will have more and more people in social need, eh? or in judicial insecurity, and so on. And this is a vicious circle. That was, for instance, what was happening in the meat uh, uh, sector in Ghent. That's a vicious circle that is created in that way. And if you cannot stop those practices, including the practices of bogus uh, posting and of uh, insufficient protection of posted workers. So that is what will happen. This is a threat that was we were explaining yesterday. That is really a threat to, uh, in the long run, for uh, protection of, uh, of workers at the right hand side of our dualistic uh, model that I was uh, showing uh, before. So uh, what we know, we can see. What we don't know, we don't see. Was man weiss man sieht in Deutsch. And this is a, an important principle. So thanks to Limosa, Limosa is a bird, and birds don't know frontiers. Uh, so that's the name of the system in, uh, in Belgium that was in store since uh, quite some years. Uh, an obligation it was to notify any posting in Belgium before employment starts. Like every Belgian worker, uh, domestic, also has to be notified to another system, Dimona, in Belgium before employment starts. When you're not in the Dimona database and someone sees that you are employed somewhere, it's, uh, it's black work. It's undeclared work, by definition. So when this was also introduced, there were some difficulties with the European Commission at some point in time that said, well, oh, it's against the free movement of workers and, and services and so on. Uh, but uh, <coughs> finally now, in the enforcement directive, happily, this principle has been taken over. And so there are some discussions on some, let's call it details, not really details, but OK. But the big progress has been made in that respect. Of course, we know that failing us protection and failing social protection go hand in hand. Very often that has been illustrated by several speakers this morning. Uh, now, for failing social protection, we have the very good IMI system to communicate, internal market information system. It's housed in DG Growth. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate, but okay, that's it, not in DG Employment. Um, it is necessary that it's in DG Growth for things like uh, machinery that has to be sold everywhere and so on. And, 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 and diploma certificates of people have to be uh, validated. 
but uh, now in the same system and in a, in a highly sophisticated way also uh, questioning can be done between labor inspectorates and other uh, public authorities on the social protection of workers. Does that company really exist in your country? Has that person really, is the is social security contribution paid for that person? All those things can just be, uh, be exchanged via IMI. We have another system that is not yet in the, in the project, in the, in the, in the post-project, but I would recommend to, to take it in. That's the KSS system, that's the uh, uh, knowledge sharing site. Sorry, knowledge sharing site. This is in every member state, there is one coordinator and one deputy coordinator um, who uh, are uh, just the correspondent for the site of the OSH inspectorates of the European Union and EFTA countries. And so if an inspector has a question on the field, he can ask immediately to the coordinator. The coordinator sends it to the other, to the other country and uh, it gets answered quite quickly. Because why is it working so quickly? Because persons know each other. They come together every one year and a half for a training session that we organize in Luxembourg. And so people know each other and feel highly committed to one another and try to help each other as, 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 as much as they can and as soon as they can. And this is only for, for us. Sometimes, of course, there are other data which are exchanged as well, which are not, which are us related, but, but which are more in the, in the social uh, field. Also, the same site is used for exchanging warnings, for instance, if some practices were seen uh, which are unsecure, unsafe, uh, and then and which are quite uncommon. These are exchanged all over uh, Europe immediately via the knowledge sharing uh, site. Um, and uh, almost at the end, there's a proposal uh, that uh, I would suggest for amending uh, OSH uh, the OSH framework directive, framework directive on uh, uh, occupational health and safety of workers, uh, the 89.391. Uh, that is the basis for all the directives on health and safety at work. <coughs> and that is a principle that should be introduced and it might help us a lot. That national legislation that is relating to subcontracting of the situations in which subcontracting can take place should not allow for any of the actors' undertakings, sharing the same work site or not, eh, uh, in a subcontracting chain to legally, contractually withdraw or be exempted from any possible co-responsibility in case an accident or any other adverse health effect occurs. Um, this should incite employers to uh, take their responsibility as happily very many employers do, eh? uh, but take their responsibility instead of organizing the avoidance of accountability, which also very many employers do, unfortunately. And that's a big problem. And what do I mean by that? For instance, uh, you have in top manufacturing industry that is uh, building a new uh, a new uh, plant in a chemical industry, for instance, a new, a new, there is a new construction site and there is a main contractor, company A, and that is uh, outsourcing work to a company B, C and D, which on their turn are outsourcing to company B, Y and C, Y, etc. This means that, if, for instance, the company B1, there, if that company is outsourcing a work to company B2, okay, that and puts in the contract, you know, you have to uh, comply with all the rules regarding occupational health and safety, eh? and then a severe, a serious accident happens. Eh? Well, a judge should not have to take into account the contractual arrangement that they should respect all the rules. No, if company B1 was able to avoid it, eh? so they can be held accountable as well for the accident that occurred. Vice versa, if company B1 uh, they, they provoke an accident and, and workers from company B are, are just injured, well, it could be that uh, company B1 will be held accountable for that as well. But it could also be that the manufacturing industry or the main contractor in that case, eh, who they just outsource the work at a too low price, eh, but they say you have to respect all the rules, but the price they pay is half of the price that you need to respect all the rules. So that in that case, any judge anywhere in any country in the European Union and EFTA countries should be able to clearly identify ind independently of any contractual arrangements, okay, you and you and you are co-responsible and you will pay for it. Like this morning, the case that was presented, maybe the Belgian 
company, I don't know, that was subcontracting to that uh, Slovakian, uh, Slovenian uh, company, I'm sorry, eh, should uh, maybe be held accountable for, for what happened there as much as the, as the, as the Slovenian employer uh, himself. So, and this is a principle that should be introduced and that could avoid a lot of disasters because it will incite uh, to just uh, take uh, measures instead of putting desks full of papers that are just for, in case of lawsuits, to say, no, 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 we've done all we could to avoid that something happened. And this is very often the case with posting of, of workers. So protecting posted workers, protecting workers under precarious conditions, combating dumping practices are things that all go together very well. This is the global image that I wanted to describe. It's puzzling. It's puzzling in terms of who is doing what, what do we need uh, to, to, to change in the legislation, what good practice do we have to introduce. It can be anything, any piece of the puzzle can be anything, but this is what this project is all about, trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together and see what's missing and what should be inserted in the puzzle. So thanks, I would say, for your attention and for puzzling together. Thank you. I want to, pre to present you our legislation harmonized with uh, European legislation about posted workers. Directive uh, 96 per uh, 71 to European Parliament and uh, of the Council concerning the posting of workers in the framework of the provision of services. I translate uh, in law number 344 per uh, 2006 on the posting of workers in the framework of traditional provision of services. At uh, six article, all employees posted to Romania under the framework of uh, transnational, uh, transnational uh, provision services uh, benefit from labor conditions established by Romanian law. Uh, at C, at E, sorry, at T, occupational health and safety, and F, protective measures applicable. Sorry, I need my glasses to working conditions of pregnant women or those uh, who have uh, recycling, giving birth, and also uh, for children and young people. Standards for the implementation of the methodological norm for implementing the provisions of the law number 319 per 2006 on occupational safety and health of workers at uh, work contain provisions additional to those of the EU directive, directives in force. At uh, 83 article, introductive and general and training, and the article 90, workplace training shall also be provided to. Workers posted, posted from an uh, and talking, and, uh, talking or enterprise and or establishment to another and worker posted by a temporary work agency. Another article uh, at 116, the investigation of the events likely to, uh, to case temporary incapacity to work uh, to foreign citizen is carried out by the territorial labor inspectorate within whose jurisdiction uh, to even occur. Another article, uh, an accident at work occurred while providing services based on a contract, order, or the other legal documents concluded by the enterprise or undertaking and or established of an employee's, sorry, um, of an employer other than uh, the one that has heard the victims shall be recorded according to the terms set out in this regard in the documents signed and concluded. And the third, and the second, where the documents concluded does not provide clauses of this effect, their clauses are not enough covering the situation or the country contrary to the provision of those methodological norms 
an accident works shall be recorded by the employer which following its investigation is found responsible for the accident. Section number four, notification, investigation, and recording of events produced outside the Romanian territory involving workers of Romanian employers who are fulfilling their state-related tasks of public interest of ser or service duties. And uh, 143 article, we have any event occurred in the territory of another country which involves Romanian workers posted or uh, heard out by Romanian employers to foreign employer, employers or uh, user for uh, carrying out work activities in the territory of the state shall immediately be notified by the Romanian employer to the diplomatic mission of the Romanian consular office in uh, the country. And uh, another part, Romanian employers that post or uh, hear out workers to foreign employers or uh, to user have the obligation to include the clauses concerning the notification of events in the content of international conventions and bilateral agreements uh, conclude with the foreign partners. Therefore, according to provisions of Article uh, 144, when such events occur, the investigation team may include representatives of Romanian diplomatic uh, mission or consular office by the country and the labor inspection. The investigation file of accidents suffered by insured Romanian workers under law number 346 will include documents drawn up by the investigation authorities of the country where the event took place and medical records from health care units which provide specialized care. All necessarily Expenses for the, their translation into Romanian will be incurred by the employer where the event took place. At the section number five, notification and uh, investigation of, uh, of uh, events produced in the territory of Romania, which involve foreign workers during their duties. The Romanian labor inspection notifies the diplomatic uh, mission or consular of the country of origin of the injured person about any event occurred in the territory of Romania, which involves foreign nationals in the exercise of their duties. And another articles about uh, this uh, type of uh, workers, the investigation of such events is uh, carried out by the Territorial Labor Inspector, uh, Inspectorate Labor Inspection together with other competent authorities agency and also with representative of the foreign employer involved in this in the event. The investigation team may also include a representative of embassy or consulate of the country. A copy of the original investigation file shall be sent to, to the embassy or consulate uh, of the country of uh, origin of the victims. In Euro, workers injured in Romania after Romanians accession to the uh, European uh, Union. Uh, total was uh, 61 of which uh, eight uh, fatalities and Romanian workers injured in the EU after its accession to the EU is total 480, of which 47 fatalities. Here we have a graphic. <coughs> we represent uh, two types of uh, events. If you can see, go up to the Romanian workers uh, which uh, work in uh, EU. 
and another graphic, economic sectors that recorded EU workers injured in Romania after the country's accession to EU. You can see the first uh, place is the construction of building uh, the civil engineering and the specialized, specialized construction activities. Eight in the trade sector, also eight other manufacturing, four people manufacturing of the met uh, metallic products, three waste management, three for uh, manufacturing of the wood and forestry, uh, three the same land transport and transport uh, via pipe, pipes, and two extraction of crude petroleum and uh, natural gas. And uh, other part, another part, economic sector that recorded injured Romanian workers in uh, the EU after the country's succession to EU. You can see 159 people's land trans in uh, land transport and transport via pipes sector, 85 in construction of buildings, civil engineering and specialized construction activities, 42 labor rela related services, 35 manufacturing of uh, food products, 16 manufacturing of uh, wood and forestry, 15 manufacturing of uh, fabricate metal products, 12 in trade, and nine storage supporting transport activities. Number of Romanian workers injured in EU after the country's succession to the EU, you can see. It's uh, uh, for uh, temporary in uh, incapacity to work and uh, fatality graphic. Number of Romanian workers injured in the EU after the country's accession to the EU. Permit me to not uh, <laughs> read because it's uh, very clear. On the sector. And now uh, the law number 30. Uh, 344 on the posting uh, of workers in the framework of the uh, transnational provision of services. Um, we have in the law the labor inspection is a public authority in charge with the uh, liaison office, which uh, performs the exchange of uh, information with the competitive authorities in the member of state of the European Union or the European Economic uh, Area. Annually, uh, it answers at uh, approximately 270 uh, requests of information, most of them uh, from Belgium, France, and Italy. It formulates more than uh, 10 requests. Government decision number 104 per 2007, regulation of specific procedure uh, concerning the posting of workers within the transnational provision of services in the territory of Romania. Undertakings enterprise are required to sub, uh, submit a notification on the posting of workers to the territorial labor inspection, inspectorate in the jurisdiction of which the activity is to be performed at uh, least five days prior to the start of activity of the posted workers in the territory of Romania, but not later than the first day of activity. Dynamics of workers posted in the transnational uh, provision of services, you can see, in uh, 2015 and uh, 16. Number registered employees uh, 4,013 in uh, 2015. Uh, number of your workers 5,000. Number of non your workers only 248. Number of uh, inspection carried out 107. 
no uh, of fines applied, 15. And, uh, and in uh, 2016, 5,423 number of uh, registered uh, employees, 10,000 number of uh, UA workers, 434 number of non U workers in uh, 2016, uh, number of inspections carried out 134, and uh, no of finest applied 21. Thank you for your attention. It's uh, our building, Labor Inspector uh, Inspection from Romania. Thank you. Well, um, I'll try to give some information about our uh, OSH legislation. <clears throat> But uh, it's impossible, I think, to do it in a 20 minutes. So I, to give a, one comprehensive information, so I'll choose some uh, topics which I think it's interesting for a lot of you. <clears throat> well, uh, our legal base for the OSH is uh, Occupational Health and Safety Act. Uh, and uh, it uh, must be applied in all activities in uh, which employees perform work for the employer. Of course, there are some exceptions, uh, especially in, this, in those activities which are uh, in conflict with the uh, uh, provisions of this act, such as in uh, Croatian armed forces or interventions of uh, policemen, firefighters, and so on and so on. Uh, a very important uh, article is uh, Article 54, which uh, stipulates its, the, stipulated the equality between the domestic and uh, foreign workers. And uh, it's a prescribed uh, obligation to employer to provide all the uh, all things uh, for the foreign workers as uh, the domestic has. <clears throat> so foreign workers must meet, fulfill all the requirements prescribed with this uh, with this our. Act. Well, uh, from the OSH inspector's point of view, I think that this Article 62 is also very important because it's, uh, it consists of, uh, uh, of uh, all uh, important rules or regulation in, one, in this one article. It, uh, it uh, stipulated that the employer must ensure the employee with uh, risk assessment for the workplace, uh, with uh, instructions for safe working practices, uh, with a uh, uh, document as evidence that uh, the employee has been trained for uh, work in a safe manner. Uh, and also uh, the, with a document that uh, employee fulfills the requirements to perform a task with uh, special working conditions. It's very important uh, for the work in Croatia. I'll come back a little later to this. And uh, at least uh, uh, records uh, of the checks carried out on the work equipment, uh, installations, work environment, and so on. Of course, uh, there are often <laughs> some exceptions. So, uh, if uh, the work on this construction site or on the workplace 
scheduled uh, to last no longer than 30 days, then it's, uh, then you, it's not needed to be provided with these uh, documents, but the documents must be available within a period uh, specified by a competent, competent uh, inspector. I'll come back uh, to this article, and uh, I don't want to speak about risk assessment instructions. I think it's uh, completely clear. But uh, I'll try to point out uh, about uh, and uh, say a few words about the evidence uh, on uh, training in, uh, for the worker in a, in a safe uh, manner or in a safe working practices. Uh, that means that all workers, according to the uh, European Directive, and also to our uh, act on uh, OSH, uh, who perform any task must be trained to work in a safe manner for that task. It, so uh, in theoretical and in a practical part. Proof of the conducted procedure is the written record. And this record must be undersigned by worker, OSH specialist, and employer. <clears throat> so, uh, now is the question, how can the foreign worker prove that he passed this uh, training uh, for a work uh, in a safe, uh, safe manner? Uh, uh, we uh, decided, and the inspector will accept, for all the foreign workers from uh, the EU member states uh, that they are, they are trained to work in a safe manner if they are trained in accordance with the valid, uh, valid regulations in a home member state and that they have a proof about that. In that case, there is not they is not need to be retrained to work in a safe manner in Croatia. But they, uh, every worker, for every worker, must uh, check, must be checked the practical part of uh, this training in the workplace in Croatia. This is very important. And uh, in other way, it could be penalized by uh, inspector. Well, and uh, what I want to say, uh, I want to say also some words about uh, these requirements to perform tasks with a special working condition. It's so uh, something specific, I think, from Croatia for Croatia. And uh, most of uh, EU countries haven't uh, 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 provisions about this. And uh, I'm speaking of the, on the ordinance on jobs with uh, special working condi conditions. Work, here is the definition of uh, our uh, work with special working condi conditions. This is work for which the employee Beside the general requirements needed for concluding an employment contract, must uh, fulfill the prescribed uh, special requirements to, relating to age, gender, professional qualifications, what means uh, uh, adequate educational background or vocational training, and also uh, to have the health or mental ability, which is determined by a specialist in occupational medicine. Uh, in accord, uh, according to uh, uh, Article 36, uh, employer shall not permit an employee who does not meet this uh, mentioned criteria to perform work. It is also 
very uh, strong uh, find in uh, Croatia. Well, uh, about a uh, few words about this uh, ordinance. Uh, if you, as you can see, 56 uh, jobs are regulated with this, uh, with this ordinance. Uh, for example, handling and driving of self-propelled machines like combine harvesters, graders, loaders, forklifts, handling, uh, also handling with cranes, handling with uh, devices on planes for storage, uh, I don't know, fl flammable or explosive uh, liquids and gases, diving operations, firefighting, and so on. Also, uh, very important to know that uh, one of the work with uh, special conditions is uh, work at height of more than three meters. Uh, and uh, uh, installation testing, I also write, uh, maintaining of electrical installations. Now I give some uh, examples for these uh, uh, jobs. Uh, at the first, uh, uh, for electricians, uh, the specific uh, requests are age of over uh, 18 years, adequate educational background, what means secondary or vocational school, and adequate uh, health st status. Uh, good eyesight, uh, recognition of colors, uh, sight in deep, and so on. Contraindications are this, what are written here and uh, adequate psychic ability. Proof for this is school certificate and also a health certificate issued by a, a specialist of uh, occupational medicine. I also put information that uh, every of these status, this uh, health status must be uh, revalidated in uh, 40 and months. Month. For the work at high, uh, the main uh, request is uh, in a health condition of a man. It's uh, defined by, I don't know, a full list of uh, contraindications. And uh, the proof for uh, ability to work at high is, uh, of course, the health uh, certificate which must be revalidated in a tw uh, every uh, 12 uh, months. And uh, the third uh, example is handling and operating with cranes. Uh, the proof is a vocational certificate and uh, uh, health status. And you see also the information about the revalid revalidation of it. Well, uh, for, from my uh, information I collect from my colleagues, the most of uh, posted workers comes from Slovenia. On the second place are Austria, then comes Italy, Germany, Sweden, uh, Sweden and I don't know who else. Why am I on this uh, mention? Because uh, I will give you uh, most of them who come to Croatia perform uh, jobs like as a forklift operator or a crane operator. So in accordance to the, uh, our regulation, to our ordinance on jobs with special conditions, for both of these uh, jobs, the worker must pass the vocational training, which must be performed in uh, one institution for, uh, for uh, of uh, adult education, and uh, as I mentioned before also, for every uh, kind of this job, uh, the worker must uh, fulfill the health ability or medical examination, and this certificate must be uh, issued by a specialist of uh, occupational medicine. Uh, here you see that uh, in Croatia is so uh, proof is uh, for this vocational uh, ability, uh, certificate of competence, and uh, for health ability, medical certificate for both of these uh, jobs. 
But where is the problem? Uh, first, uh, I want to mention uh, Slovenia. They haven't uh, uh, these requests and they haven't a special school, vocational training or something like this, as in Croatia. But uh, they have a, a medical certificate and a specialist uh, for, of uh, occupational medicine when in Slovenia issue uh, this medical certificate in accordance with the risk assessment, with the risks, risks in a risk assessment. And the second uh, example is uh, Austria for the same uh, jobs. Uh, they have uh, so specific education, vocational training, but they have not foreseen a medical examination for this. And uh, when these workers come to Croatia, the question is open how to prove for the workers from Slovenia or from Austria uh, this uh, working or uh, vocational ability and also the health, uh, health ability. The second question is on which language? Because we are in a Europe, uh, so this is one, uh, one state with a <laughs> lot of uh, nations, a lot of countries, a lot of rules. And uh, what will a uh, labor inspector uh, in Croatia, ex uh, what he will, will uh, want to see about the proof of expertise for these jobs. First of all, I will uh, say that uh, the worker must have a proof which is val valid in the member state from where uh, the worker come. If uh, he has, a, if he can perform the work with this proof in his home country or uh, country of origin, then he can, with this uh, kind of proof, uh, perform the work also in uh, Croatia. So for the forklift crane, just to mention, forklift or a crane operator from Slovenia is enough, if, is enough to have a so-called uh, MPK certificate, which means national napoklitsna classificacija or uh, national classification of occupations and uh, for, but uh, for those workers from uh, from austria they must uh, be provided with a medical certificate issued by specialist of uh, occupational medicine in member states uh, from where they come from or the another, the only, the only another solution is uh, a medical examination in Croatia. Uh, the second question I mentioned was the language. Uh, according to our uh, constitutional law, all the documents must be in uh, Latinic letter and on in uh, Croatian language. But to, it means that. Uh, the documents must be translated, translated of, uh, in, uh, of a certifi certified uh, person. Or it's another possibility uh, that uh, the original uh, issuer of the document issued this document, this original document in uh, Croatian language. So if you want to avoid the certi certified uh, translation. Uh, of course, this is only a peak of the iceberg of the documents and all the provisions in our legislation. Everyone must care about the risk assessment, about the means of work, personal protective equipment, and so on and so on, evacuation about uh, uh, providing the first aid. And uh, at the end, I want to mention, uh, especially for 
construction site uh, uh, obligation to send a notice to labor inspectorate about the beginning of work on a workplace, especially on a construction site. And uh, there is also obligation to have a plan of work on construction site. And if, our, if two or more employers work on the same place, they have the, the main of them must uh, appoint uh, the coordinator for safety, safety and uh, health matters. For those who want to learn more or know more, here is, here, here is the link uh, to our Occupational Health and uh, Safety Act. It's translated and uh, it's unofficial uh, version, unofficial uh, translated version, but the author is uh, my Ministry of Labor and Pension <laughs> System. <laughs> so I think it's uh, enough to uh, learn and uh, it's um, like uh, official. <laughs> so uh, that's all from me till now. Thank you for your attention. So thank you to all three presenters. Um, we heard um, here about another perspective, um, namely the legal framework, which is of high importance for this uh, project. But we also um, heard about the importance of the face-to-face -face interaction in uh, regard to the knowledge sharing site, right? Um, so please, if you have any questions, comments. Thank you very much. Uh my name is Marko Tanasic. I work for the uh, Slovenian Association, Association of Free Trade Unions. And uh, I also uh, run uh, one project uh, uh, in cooperation with the uh, uh, German, Croatian, and Bulgarian Union Confederations. Um, before the questions, I have, uh, I have actually a couple of questions with uh, two pictures. I need to show you two pictures. It goes with the uh, questions. As I said, we heard uh, 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 a couple times about about uh, working conditions. Uh, they push the, their limits and they uh, work uh, more than 50 or 60 hours per week. Uh, but we haven't heard about their uh, living conditions. And what do you think? What is this? Do you have any idea? <laughs> Uh, I will answer. This is the kitchen, a part of the apartment of the Polish uh, posted workers in Netherlands. Uh, unfortunately, this is not isolated uh, case. Uh, we had uh, also such cases in Slovenia and all over the Europe. And uh, my question is: um, Could we talk about? Uh, Occupational, safe, and he healthy, uh, without talking about living conditions. If they, if they, uh, after the, the, the hard day and long working day, go to uh, back to the, 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 the such uh, living conditions and live there, sleep, eat, or they eat. We don't know if they if they don't uh, uh, receive their money. As we said, as we as we heard, uh, uh, the, the uh, wages uh, delay for uh, more weeks, and uh, I'm not sure that we could expect uh, safe work and uh, improvement of the health of the uh, these workers. So could, could we, yeah, uh, as well, we, I'm not sure that we, uh, do you know what it is? <laughs> Tell me you don't know any idea. Uh, this is the, um, in Novo Mesto, uh, the uh, headquarter of our company who post uh, workers to Germany. Uh, actually, not all the house, but 
just that uh, uh, mailbox, this white one in the middle of the picture. This mm -hmm. is the actually headquarters of the company. Uh, so we cannot uh, probably talk about uh, how, to, how to promote uh, safe and healthy at the workplace if we have such companies, mailbox companies. This is my question. <laughs> and I agree with, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Karel. Uh, we probably have to, uh, all of us, this is the question for thinking for all of us uh, how to contribute to the, to the puzzle uh, that Karel represented represent, uh, before, how to contribute all of us to the uh, promotion of the safe and healthy. Thank you. Uh, this legal base of this, uh, or uh, is this legal or un or illegal work of this uh, posting company? This is not my point of yeah. uh, area of work. Uh, from the OSH field, I can say that uh, we have an ordinance. We have over 50 ordinance ordinances in Croatia. One of them is for the ordinance uh, uh, on, uh, just to translate, <laughs> ordinance for a safe workplace. And uh, so if this house is comply with, uh, with, uh, with the ordinance, then it's okay. We don't care about other other things. If not, we will uh, stop the work in this uh, in the in the area which is not in accordance to the provisions of the ordinance and our law. Very simple. Inspection acts in a very yeah. s simple way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's uh, <clears throat> it's kind of situations that we have discovered as well in our country and uh, it's it's typical for the total exploitation of of, uh, of, of people eh? it says people want to make money of it and you are, you are into that vicious circle of the cheapest gets the job mm. and how can you get cheaper in the very end eh? you can do social fraud and you can not take the necessary health and safety uh, preventive precautions at the workplace and also on the housing you can save a lot of money and that's how they sometimes get 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 the cheapest that's, that's what happens. That's what happens nowadays. Mm. And, and, and that's why my, my proposal would be that, that just whatever happens, that everyone in the subcontracting chain can be held accountable for what goes wrong. And as far as I'm concerned, it can go to the housing as well. And of course, the, 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 the problem is, even if you know as an inspection service, like with the Limosa system, who are the, the, the posted workers in your country, it are that many that you, you never have enough uh, human resources in the inspection service so to, cover, to cover all, and that's the case everywhere. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the problem could to some extent be overcome, uh, independently of the fact that we need more human resources in all inspection services all over Europe, because they are shrinking right now, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. eh? due to uh, savings in, in state budgets. Mm -hmm. But so uh, it could be overcome to some extent if everybody who is co-responsible for just coming to such situations eh, can be held accountable, can be fined, and then and can be seriously fined. I think the fines in my country are quite high now. Eh? They were quite low in the past. Yeah. They have been increased uh, recently. And that could be helpful because it could discourage to just uh, um, um, save money in that way by giving to a posted uh, worker or to a foreign company such, uh, such conditions. There is the responsible responsibility of the foreign company, of course, but there is the responsibility also of, of the, the, the main contractor and, and, and the subcontractor who is contract directly contracting party for workers being housed in that way but also even for the initial uh, contracting party, mm -hmm. be it a company or, or private person or institution or, or, uh, or a governmental body or whatever. Author of the law. <laughs>
Uh, I will add that in this case, in, the, in uh, this house, if the, if the company uh, has not a sign at the mm -hmm. entrance mm -hmm. yeah, on this, uh, the labor inspectorate or the labor inspector will not enter because it's not allowed to enter on a private property. Without sign, we uh, consider that this is the private property. In that mm -hmm. case, we will uh, contact uh, our colleagues from the customs because this is the breach of uh, another, uh, another law uh, and uh, it's a kind of uh, illegal performing of uh, an activity. Carol actually almost implied that with his analysis and the model uh, a little bit, but I wanted to know from all of you um, that it seems like there is, uh, the regulation is in place and it's quite good and should protect the workers. But my question is like, how easy or how difficult is it to implement such regulations in um, the countries of origin? And do you follow workers when they leave national borders, like especially in the case of Romania and Croatia? Are you able to you know, enforce the regulations and protect your workers outside the national borders? But until today, for instance, if the persons pay uh, social security in the home country, um, so the authenticity of the A1 form that should prove that the person, the posted workers, is, is paying social security, it cannot be controlled directly by in the working country. So one can ask to the to the to the to the the, the sending country. One can ask if the person is paying his social security there, but one cannot control it. So whatever answer is given, one can only accept it. And this is one of the one of the problems. And we try to overcome that with, with better collaboration and direct uh, uh, bilateral agreements with, with other inspectorates, the bilateral agreements which have been recognized now in the enforcement directive. That has been a long discussion. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, they were not uh, endorsed um, in, 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 the, in the original version of the enforcement directive. But now, now, now they are. There's not only the IMI exchange, that is remarkably under DG growth, not under DG employment, but there is also uh, now the bilateral agreements which have been concluded before, like my country has several bilateral agreements with, uh, with uh, several uh, countries all over Europe. Yeah. And it's, uh, but yeah. Could we add another dimension to your model then, the transnational model? Because you, said, you talked about sharing accountability through the uh, subcontracting chain, but then it should also go across yes. the borders for it to be like really effective, uh, like, you know. Yeah, with, yeah. The, with the enforcement directive, uh, a good answer has been given, eh? but uh, Philippe who, uh, had to leave already, but uh, he could comment much more in detail on that, but with the enforcement directive, an answer has been given to just uh, the, the fact that uh, if uh, infringements are being done in the working country, that it could lead uh, quite much more easily than before to fines uh, uh, or whatever or convictions in the in the sending country. So this is uh, we have made already one big step forward, and, and I know that uh, the Belgian Commissioner Marianne Thyssen for Employment, eh, she happens to be Belgian now, that uh, she is um, really very um, very much working on, on on that and trying to just push to to improve it as much as she can, but. I can imagine that not all people in the Commission are at the same wavelength, for reasons we may all only guess, informed guess. Okay. Um, if not, um, then um, I would like to take uh, Carl's metaphor for the conclusion about puzzles. We heard a lot of perspectives uh, today. And uh, we all hope that uh, at the end of this project we will put as much pieces as possible together in the, uh, in the results of this, projects, of this project. And um, I would also like to thank uh, all the presenters and, uh, uh, for, for their presentations and uh, 
the audience for your questions and uh, comments and photos. Um, I think we had a fruitful event today. Um, and um, not to forget, I would also like to um, remind the presenters of today's conference uh, to send me the longer abstracts of their presentations uh, in order to, um, to create a booklet of conference proceedings that we'll have um, for the OSH uh, Observatory. Um, now, um, I think um, Christina should have uh, a last word. So please, Christina, can you conclude this event? Thank you so much, Natasha, also for sharing this uh, all, the whole day. Um, yes, what to say? I think uh, we are really, really uh, hardworking people these uh, past two days. Um, I'm really thankful to you all that you attended uh, the meeting yesterday, the joint visit and also the conference today. Uh, especially thank you to all presenters uh, that um, were presenting today and also uh, yesterday's, yesterday. Uh, most of, uh, of our uh, participants already left, nevertheless. Um, I'm glad that uh, also uh, people from outside the partnership came today and listened to our um, um, pr presentations, also the, the, dis the discussion. Um, I would like to say that uh, today uh, we also had the opportunity to meet uh, a colleague from Croatia that uh, she's, the pa she's part of another project on posting of workers, uh, FAIR posting. So we will be able to make some connection and maybe uh, some, there will be some synergy between those two projects and we could work together. And um, also a colleague from uh, the um, uh, trade union from Slovenia came today and uh, I believe they also uh, are part of, uh, were part and, st and uh, still are part of, uh, of Project, uh, projects on posting of workers and we will also make, um, we have a sort of a, uh, established connection uh, with them, but uh, I think there should be and could be done even more in this field. So uh, thank you so much um, and have a nice, uh, pleasant afternoon and we will um, send you information, we will keep you uh, posted about uh, what's going on uh, and um, I do hope you will have um, the energy and also attend some other uh, events in the future that will be organized in the, as part of this uh, project, uh, Bosch. Uh, I, I, just before uh, I was talking to some um, participants from the organizations that uh, were not included or were not so um, actively involved in our previous projects. So these are new connections now. And I'm really, really glad that uh, this network will be um, spreading and on, on the national level and also on the transnational level. So um, yes, thank you so much again. And uh, those that are leaving today or tomorrow have a safe trip back, our partners, uh, representatives of associated institutions and um, I do hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you.